Today, we're gonna find out how far the new Volkswagen ID7 GTX Tour can go on a full charge or battery. This is one of the very few electric station wagons currently on sale. Kind of a dying breed, these big station wagons, and it is a shame because this is one of the best cars, electric cars, EVs I've driven lately. I've already taken it on a long trip and I absolutely love it. So in this video, we're gonna find out how far it can go on a full charge of battery at a constant 120 kph or 75 miles an hour. Porta lets you become the boss of your own economy. The app will show you how much debt you have across different creditors and you can even refinance inside the app so you can collect that debt in one place to get lower interest rates and lower monthly costs. Get a free non-binding quote today through the app and become the boss of your own economy. Use the referral code ELREFA to get 500 points which you can use in the reward store or towards your debt. A huge thanks to Horda for sponsoring this video. I've already been on a long trip with this Volkswagen ID7 GTX Tour. I've been almost all the way to Stockholm and back over the weekend. And I have to say, I'm really impressed by this car. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's spacious, it has a nice interior, comfortable seats, a great infotainment system, and on that trip, it also had very good efficiency. But today, the conditions aren't the best. Though, about half an hour ago, it was raining and pouring cats and dogs. It has calmed down a little bit now. The road is wet but it has stopped raining. But how long is that, you know, not rain going to last? Because the forecast says it may rain for the next two hours. But I'm crossing my fingers that it doesn't pour down too much. So the results aren't too extreme. But yeah, this is a very, very, very impressive car. And priced like this, this I think is like almost fully spec. It has, you know, the sport interior. It has, you know, the red exterior paint color. We have the Harman Kardon sound system. We have these, you know, ergo comfort seats, which are electrically adjustable. They have heating, they have cooling. I think they also even have massaging. And this also has the panel roof. This car equipped like this is a little more than 600,000 kroners here in Norway. And yeah, that's a lot of money for a Volkswagen. But it, this is a big, this is a large station wagon with a big battery. And compared to a lot of the competition, I think this is very well priced. In, in this price point, at this price point, I think this may be my favorite electric car so far. I mean, it is very, very impressive. But I'm going to talk about more about that in my review later this week. So about after about 20 minutes on the road now heading northward, our average consumption is at around 22.7, 22.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which isn't terrible but we'll see we'll have to see i'll update you guys once we get to our halfway point in muel in about an hour for almost all of the trip it's actually been no rain just been you know the roads just been wet but it actually hasn't actually rained but for like the past like seven eight minutes it started pouring and now it looks like it's calming down a little bit, but yeah, we had quite quite a bit of rain like for five, six minutes. I don't think it's going to affect, you know, the average consumption that much. And we're probably going to have to, you know, head through that shower on our way south again, because we're now at our turnaround point. And after about, yeah, an hour on the road, our average consumption is 22.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So according to the wind map, we have a uh, a, a side wind of about uh, or a crosswind of about a meter per second so it's not too bad it's not too bad so the conditions i mean not ideal today but i don't think they're the worst it's 10 degrees celsius outside now when we started it was around 12 so you know it's getting a little bit colder now that we are approaching october but yeah that average consumption of low 22s i don't think that's too bad let's see what we will get once we get back to where we started. 
almost all the way back to where we started. It hasn't rained, but for the past five, six minutes, it started pouring down a little bit, but not too bad. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna go back to the charter where we started. We're gonna connect. We're gonna see what charging speed we get after two hours driving on a motorway with no preconditioning of the battery. Yes, this car has both manual preconditioning, a really nice interface to see what charging speed you get just connecting to a charger. You can also manually precondition the car and then the car will tell you what speed you get after X amount of minutes of preconditioning. You can also do it automatically on route using the built-in navigation system. We don't do that in this range test. We do that in my long trip test. This range test is all about getting that maximum range, that maximum efficiency, and that means just driving the car in eco mode and going a constant speed because if we precondition well then we're using energy so we're gonna go over here and it seems to be a little bit full with the chargers and there's a large truck charging also but I'm pretty sure we're gonna find a charger over here somewhere I think we're gonna go to this one right here okay so let's stop the timer there and then I'll show you the average consumption we have now after a few hours on the road and we are at 22.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Okay, we are now connected, just waiting for the charger to initialize and start the charging. So the charge port is on the passenger side on the rear of this ID7 GTX Tour, and the charge port is manually operated. So while this is booting up, check this out. This large truck here with a trailer, that is pretty cool. Uh, Volvo truck, uh, electric Volvo truck, a large truck. Check that out, guys. It is awesome. So now let's take a look here. We are at 23% uh, already. We started with 22, but uh, the speed is now ramping up. So the peak charging speed of this platform is 185 kilowatts, according to Volkswagen. But I've seen numbers as high as 90, 190, 192 kilowatts, if I'm not mistaken, with the Volkswagen ID, with the ID Buzz, I think. So let's see what charging speed we are gonna get now. Yeah, we're peaking at 155 kilowatts. I don't think that is too bad, considering that we haven't preconditioned the battery and the ambient temperature outside of about 10 to 13 degrees Celsius today. Now let's take a look at the results. So if we take the usable battery capacity of this Volkswagen ID7 GTX Tour, which is 86 kilowatt hours, we divide it by the consumption, 22.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then we subtract 3% for heat and discharging losses. That gives us a theoretical range under today's conditions of 369 kilometers. And on the surface, that actually isn't too bad. I mean, it's not great, 369 kilometers of range, but that result isn't bad either. If you compare it to the cars we've been testing lately, lately like the Audi Q6 e-tron Quattro and the Polestar 4 long range single motor, that is a lot less range than those cars and also about the same or higher consumption. But you have to remember two things. First off, Today's conditions was worse than both the Polestar 4 and that Audi Q6 e-tron. I'm pretty sure if we had, had similar conditions to those cars tested, we would have had consumption maybe as low as that Polestar 4. And then we're talking about really good consumption considering that this car is all wheel drive. It's also longer and bigger and wider than those cars. It may not be as tall, but it's also not as aerodynamic because it's not, you know, a fastback shape. This being a station wagon, it's actually a worse shape for efficiency and aerodynamics than a fastback. But you also have to consider that this car has a much smaller battery than both that Audi and that Polestar 4 because it is a lot cheaper car. This car, as I said earlier in this video, fully spec like this is a little more than 600,000 kroners, which is the starting price of that base spec rear wheel drive Polestar I drove 
and also a few hundred thousand kroners or tens of thousands of euros less than that Q6 e-tron. And that's why I think for the money, this is great. 369 kilometers in the real world under these conditions is great. I'm pretty sure if we had dry roads between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius, we would have got, gotten close to 400 kilometers, maybe even cross that 400 kilometer uh, you know, milestone, which is great considering the price of this car. It's a great car. I really like this car, especially for the price. The Comfort, one of the most comfortable and quiet cars I've driven lately. The dampening is impressive with this car. Maybe the best dampened car. This car has, you know, the adaptive uh, dampers, but it's still on, you know, normal steel springs. There's no air suspension here. And for that, it is super, super impressive. So I'm really impressed by this car. I can't wait to do it, uh, you know, do my long trip test. Hopefully the day we're doing that, the conditions are going to be better than today. Even though we didn't have the worst conditions, the conditions weren't optimal either. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.